Hello and welcome to the Nemesis Guide for Jungle. This guide will be split into three sections. Firstly, building. Secondly, the passive abilities, basic attack chain and ability upgrade order. And finally, fighting, combos and general mechanical tips and tricks. So firstly, we start off with building. Um, Nemesis in Smite's history has always been very versatile with her builds. Um, in the past, she's built hybrid ability, crit, auto attack based, anything you can think of and she's built it as an assassin but now the general consensus is that the two best builds are either crit or ability based ultimately the decision will be personal preference the crit build allows for higher carry potential but maybe less consistency whilst the ability based build will be consistent a lot more often but maybe be a bit harder to carry the game with so firstly we start off with the crit build the crit build starts with Assassin's Blessing, um, and then tier 1 of Golden Blade. One healing potion, and Hand of the Gods is your consumable. You use Hand of the Gods on the back XP camps that you start at the speed side, so if you go speed blue XP, use it on those, camp, those XP camps, or if you go speed XP, use it there, and then blue. Then you want to finish off the Golden Blade, then into Warrior's Abbey. Golden Blade allows for a lot of clear. Worry Tabby, obviously standard boots. Toxic Blade gives you some anti-healing. A lot of good early stats as well, again for quite cheap. Golden Blade and Toxic Blade, fairly cheap early. Then we go into Malice, the first of our crit items. Wind Demon, and then you sell Assassin's Blessing for this Deathbringer. So this is the general crit build. You can sell Warrior Tabby for any number of items. You could sell it for a lifesteal item like Bloodforge, Serrated Edge, Assy. Or maybe if you want some survivability, you could even go for a Magi's Cloak here. Magi's Cloak is very good on Nemesis. Um, or you could even go for an Arendite. And you can sell Warrior Tabby for any of these items. And also, if you choose to sell Golden Blade, you can sell it for Golden Blade as well. Golden Blade should not be sold if the enemies have a lot of Hide of the Nemean Lions. So this item. Or a lot of shells that are upgraded. Because those will give the enemy block stacks. And that'll stop your auto attacks. So you want to keep Golden Blade to be able to chunk through all of those. So that is it for the crit build. Then onto the ability based build. You start off with Assassin's Blessing. The one of Crusher. You can go Golden Blade to this build. But I think Crusher works better. And you don't need the Golden Blade. If your abilities are doing most of the damage to the camp anyway. Then we want to go into Warrior Tabby this time first. And then back into Crusher. Then you have a choice of either Brawlers or Hydra's Lament. Um, either of these items are good to get. Brawlers obviously for anti-healing. Hydra's Lament allows for high damage on auto attack cancels. Let's say we just go Hydra's here. And then Arendite. Then into Heartseeker. Then you sell Assassin's Blessing for Titan's Bane. Nemesis uses all of these items extremely well. Um, Titan's Bane, very good for getting it on the ult. Arendite for chasing people down after the ult. Heartseek obviously works well on anybody who uses abilities as a physical. And then obviously you can sell boots for any number of items again. Brawlers, maybe the enemy picked up a lot of lifesteal and you didn't see it. Or if you went Brawlers here, boots, you could get a Hydra's here instead. This is fine as well. Also, some of the other items. Magi Cloak, again, very good on Nemesis. Bloodforge as well. On this build, maybe not Assy or Serrated Edge. I don't think they would work as well. And then for both of your relics, you'd get Blink, obviously, in this case. The starting consumables would be the same as well. Sorry, I forgot to mention that. And then, obviously, second relic, Beads. And that is it for the building section for Nemesis. And now, onto Nemesis' passive abilities and basic attack chain. Also, ability upgrade weird order. So her passive is Scales of Fate. Nemesis holds the Scales of Balance, hitting enemies with basic attacks, tips the scale in her favour, reducing her target's physical and magical power and increasing hers. So basically, you steal power from the enemy, you reduce theirs, and you gain some yourself. And you see, this effect stacks up to three times once for each basic. Most of the time you don't need to pay attention to this passive or do any managing with it really, it's just kind of there. You might notice it if you're boxing people in the early to mid game, but late game you definitely won't notice it. This will keep me going. Um, so then on to Nemesis basic attack progression chain. I'll just sell 
this and go down one level. Um, so her progression chain is 1, 1, 0.75, 1.25. And you can see that says damage and swing time. What this means is that the dam when it says 1 here, that means that it will do this 301 here. And also the attack speed will follow this 1.02 here. And then as you saw there, there was a faster attack now, which was a 0.75. This means that it's the time it takes to get the basic attack off is 0.75 or 25% faster. But it also does 0.75 of the damage or 25% less damage. Whereas the 1.25 does 25% more damage, but also takes 25% longer or slows your attack by 25%. So as you can see... You can see all four of those go off there. And then um, for Nemesis' first ability, Swift Vengeance. Nemesis dashes in a line, dealing damage to, um, to enemies in front of her path, and she may dash again within two seconds. She may use basic attacks and abilities in between the dashes. So as you can see here, it's about 30 units. You dash, and you can dash again. I just... Hold on to here. As you can see here, um, let me get my hand back. As you can see here, you can use it, cancel it, and then start auto attacking. Um, do that again. And reactivate it to do another dash. Really simple, both dashes do damage. Now, onto Nemesis 2 Slice and Dice. Nemesis swings her blade, stealing damage in an area in front of her. Enemies in the center are struck for two times damage and slowed for two times damage. You can see this red area here. This represents where they'll take double damage and also be slowed. As you can see, that did about 500. On the sides, there's about 250. And also, it won't slow them on the sides either. Pretty simple ability. Nemesis is three, Retribution. She activates a temporary shield around herself that protects her from a set amount of damage or until the time expires. A percentage of the incoming damage from gods is healed and reflected back at the source. Hard crowd control removes the shield. So, as you can see when she uses the shield, it will reflect 50% of the damage coming in. She will also heal any damage coming in and the shield health is 500. As you can see, the shield health appears here is blue or on that bar there, blue as well. And it's a fairly simple ability, it's broken with um, hard crowd control, so stuns, um, silences, those types of things will break the shield before it's expired or before the damage has been dealt to it. The Nemesis's ult, Divine Judgment, Nemesis chooses a single god, reducing their health and movement speed and stealing a portion of their protections for a time period. Her, protection, her movement speed sorry, is also increased during this time. As you can see, it's targeted, it's actually an unmissable ability. It will only activate once you have it over somebody. And then once you do it, you can see my movement speed will increase and so will my protections. Protections increase, movement speed increase as well. And it also, obviously these are bots, but it will do 30% of the enemy's health. But it deals that as physical damage, so it won't actually be 30%. It will be that. It will be as if you were dealing like, say, if their um, health was 2000, you will be dealing 600 damage. Maybe it's reduced to like 400 damage because of the enemy protections. And also again, the moon speed and it lasts for 5 seconds. Then on to the ability upgrade order. The ability sort of hierarchy, if you will, is 4, 2, 3, 1. I just reset my level here. So I'm going to use those. So at level 1, I can't upgrade my ult. I can't upgrade my 2, so I upgrade my 2. Then next, you can either use upgrade your 1 or your 3. Um, you can put a point to either of them. Personally, most of the time I like to get the dash because of the damage or potential in mid, maybe. Then, you can either get a point in your 2 or your 3. If you're boxing someone at this time, maybe get your 3. But most of the time, I put another point in my 2. Then 3. Then ult. And then now you start to rigidly follow this hierarchy. So, can't upgrade my ult, so upgrade my 2. So, I'm basically maxing my 2 here. Can't upgrade my ult, can't upgrade my 2, can't upgrade my 3, yeah I can, put a point in it, go back to here, ult, 2, then just max the 3, 
and obviously ult whenever you can and start maxing the one ult whenever you can obviously and then you finish off obviously with the ult and that's it for Nemesis's passive abilities basic attack progression chain and ability upgrade order so now we're going to be moving on to fighting combos and general mechanical tips and tricks. So I'm just going to sell all these items and use the crit build because that's a build that I use probably most often this with her. And now the first tip, I don't know if you could pick it up, but it was to put this on instant casting. So on normal casting, when you use this, you have to cancel it to be able to get in basic attacks and then reactivate it to be able to um, fire it again. So you have to basically right click here and then start alt attacking and then press 1 again and then left click again to get the dash off. So if you have it on instant casting, you press 1, you can start alt attacking straight away and then you press 1 again. No extra activations of the abilities, no cancelling of it, you just press 1 whenever you want to dash. It's that simple. Um, that's obviously the first tip, very important. Next tip is a three is an auto attack reset. This is slightly different than an auto attack cancel. Basically, all you need to know is it's extremely fast to get the basic attacks off, far more than a basic attack cancel. A normal cancel will look like this. See the space in between the abilities to get, you saw the space in between the auto attacks that had to like go off before I could use another one. So obviously, there was the delay between the auto attacks there with this. Basically no delay. I don't know if you saw there, but that was two hits. As you can see, there were two crits there. Obviously, it's very fast. And all you have to do is just hold left click. And then as soon as your first basic hits, press three. Like that. As soon as the first basic hits, press three. You can see. Like that. Two basics going off there. So that's the first thing, obviously you can tell by now that Nemesis has a lot of auto attack cancelling, it's a big tip with her. And basically that just means using auto attacks before you fire an ability, or after you fire an ability. So I would just, like that. And then as soon as I've casted this two for instance, I will just hold left click. And obviously do the auto attack. Like that. Same thing with the dash. Obviously the dash has a range on it and it will go further than a basic attack. But remember the range is, the dash's range is about 30. So if you just do that, you'll instantly start auto attacking them when you hit them. Um another thing is obviously remember this three can be broken with hard TC. However, remember earlier in the build, Magi's cloak is very strong on her. Because if you use a 3 and hard TC comes in, someone say throws um, a silence or a stun at you then, um, while you have your 3 on you, the Magi's will make you CC immune and effectively stop your shield from getting broken for a sec for one second at least. Or if you use a shield and then beads whilst you're inside it, again the beads will dissipate the CC kind of and your shield will stay on you and not be cancelled. And then I'll just show you a nice little combo with Nemesis that you can use um, late game. And it's just blink, ult, um, two to chase, and then auto attack three, auto attack. You'll see. I'll blink, I'll do it slow first off. So I blink in, ult them, use a two for extra slow and chase, and then auto attack three, auto attack. And then I'll just throw in dashes to either chase the enemy or um, disengage and retreat. I'll just show you from here. Obviously something like that. You can use the dashes to either re-engage or disengage by just pressing them in rapid succession after one another. And so that's like a basic combo with Nemesis. You don't have to blink in first. You can just ult straight away. And it's usually enough to catch up to most people. Obviously depending on the spacing in a team fight, it might be more difficult or less difficult. It depends. Um, another point is don't be afraid to die in full commit. You know, most of the time you will want to use your dashes aggressively, realistically. And it's not too bad to die as Nemesis. You will 100% kill someone. And also, with the tip I'm going to show you next, you're not only going to be killing one person, you'll be dealing damage to others as well. So, 
remember on Nemesis' ult that it steals 30% of the protections from an enemy. So if I were to give this guy, let's just do a standard like Warrior's amount of protections late game. He's got 200 plus his base protections there. So then if I were to ult him, I would gain a lot of protections here. It would be like having a physical and a magical item like separately. As you can see, they drastically increase there. And this is really good because people will also get baited into thinking you're committing onto the tank. If you ult the tank, so say I'm walking towards these two enemies, if I ult the tank, they might think I'm going on him, but then I suddenly switch to the squishy. Both of them have then been thrown off because he thinks he's about to get committed on by a nemesis, whereas he thinks, oh, my friend is about to get committed on by a nemesis. Because in actuality, it's the other way around, I'm committing onto this guy and killing him. And you don't, and stealing protections from a squishy isn't all that important. And the damage from the ult generally isn't important either. And neither is a slow, because you're too slows anyway. So you can just ult them, and commit to this one. Like that. Throws enemies off. Very good. You steal protections, gain extra tankiness. And again, don't be free to full commit. That includes your beads. If you don't have a magi's. You just have your warrior tabby at this point. If you want to just like beads whilst you're in this, that's fine. Beads away whilst you're in your three. If you think, say, like your, say you commit onto an Ula, and you know the Ula has his axe up, you're going to want to um, pre-bead the axe so it doesn't break your shield. So I would pre-bead this and just beads while you're in the shield. That way, if he throws the axe, it doesn't do anything, and his axe is down, or he decides he can't throw the axe because he's CC immune, and then he waits till after, but by that time he's probably dead from the Chris. Um, you can also, you can ult from far away. Um, auto attack cancels, again, I just want to reiterate, super important on her. He's basically be holding left leg down as much as possible when you're going in. Um, but you can obviously with Wind Demon you get movement speed so it allows you to crit and well, crit and then chase but with extra movement speed. Obviously once this goes, we'll lose that extra movement speed. But maybe it's good for chasing someone down, spacing out your auto attacks, say if I was running after this guy. Spacing out my auto attacks and then hitting him whenever I get close to him. Obviously he's very slow but if it was an actual person you'd want to probably space him out a bit. Just to gain the movement speed in between them. Um, I think that's probably it for Nemesis. Um, again, don't be free to full commit. Just want to reiterate that point. She's a very strong jungler right now. Um, has very good ganks. Especially early. She can outbox anyone early. She's really good at ganking ADCs, obviously. Especially ones who can't break a shield. She destroys people like Moose and Cab, obviously. Um, also another thing, just before this ends, Malice, um, the passive of this is successfully hitting an enemy god with a critical strike will subtract 3%, 3 seconds from all your abilities currently on cooldown except for your all obviously. If I had normal cooldown here, so it subtracts 3 seconds, if I wanted to for instance commit onto her, the Odin bot, as soon as I commit, like my two starts to go on cooldown. You can even use it for the dashes as well. You can see, obviously, reduce the dash cooldown as well. This could allow you to obviously survive in a fight, maybe long enough. Because obviously, if you reset this twice, which you can with the malice passive, because this is once every five seconds, and the cooldown this is twelve seconds, you could get two like resets off on that. Um, during a fight and have a very short cooldown of the one, basically a six second cooldown. Um, you can do that as well, you know, you can think about managing the Malice passive if you want to as well. But that's sort of the general tips with Nemesis. Um, you can be very creative with the combos, um, you know, mix match, get a feel for when to use certain abilities, when not to use abilities, watch pro players, or high level players, etc. Play Nemesis in jungle and you'll pick her up very quickly. But that is it for the Nemesis Guide, I hope you enjoyed and I hope you learned something. Thanks for watching.